Hey everybody, Ben here for the Bono Podcast and welcome to Blood Bowl Formations, Corn. So we are having a look at the new Games Workshop team, Corn, that was released in the last few weeks. Full of strength, full of frenzy, full of absolute carnage. And we're having a look at some formations, so how to set up the team. Whether you're kicking or receiving, we're going to have a look at where to put your positionals and why. So if you're planning on playing with Corn or against them soon, you should pick up a few tips or tricks from running this massively frenzy-heavy carnage team. Okay, so let's start with defense. Despite the fact that this team loves a jolly good blitzing and it's very useful to be able to open the game active to make the most of your blocks and the most of the frenzy, the corn team is actually a very powerful defensive team. Turning that ball over is huge. Now this team does not have a huge amount of speed, does not have a huge amount of agility. It's just fine. Movement six, edge three plus is exactly average in every way. No combat skills and um, no ball handling skills means that it kind of sits it gets a c grade for ball movement so when it comes to offense and scoring it's just fine when it comes to defense and stopping your opponent from scoring that's where this team absolutely shines and i'm going to gush about one of my favorite players at the moment which are the blood seekers which are going to be represented by the s's in these pictures strength four frenzy movement five means they've got plenty of coverage you've got one two three four of these players with one two three four five squares of movement each so they get a ton of coverage and you can see there that just with four of them on the pitch you create this massive interwoven kind of areas where you can blitz with a strength four frenzy piece and the difference between blitzing with a strength 4 frenzy piece and a strength 3 piece is normally about 3 dice. If you think about it, you're likely to be able to 2 die block most backfield threats on your own, which is a huge advantage. And then you're going to be able to frenzy them, which means you're going to be rolling 4 dice instead of potentially 1. So we'll start with the chevron defense. We're going to talk through these defenses and kind of paint the picture of when and where they'd be useful. So the chevron defense gives you a bunch of interlinking tackle zones here that you can see covers the entire breadth of the pitch and not only does it do that but it presents only a couple of vulnerable areas so the way we've set up this one we've got the lineman and the blood spawn on the line here we are sacrificing three players in the middle that is fine if you don't have a blood beast it's not a problem this guy becomes a lineman if you are worried about your blood beast you can stack the line with extra linemen and place it to the side instead. However, the only time I'd be worried about that is if I was playing against a, a heavy bash team. Okay, Black Orcs, uh, Chaos Renegades. I've got a fun game against Chaos Renegades tonight with my corn team. Um, you know, actually Lizards, maybe, if they've got a Croxagor on the full lineup of Saurus, Saurii. Now, in that circumstance, you're not worried too much about using the Chevron defense because this is useful against dash teams. So, dash teams... They're going to try and score in two to three turns. We're looking at Skaven. We're looking at Elven Union. We're looking at just, quite frankly, turn six of any game. The Chevron defense is going to allow you to stall your opponent out. They're going to make a move. You are going to be able to present a fantastic counterpunch. So you've got three dudes on the line, whether the lineman or the Blood Beast. We do like to put the Blood Beast on the line. It, one, should and may um, do uh, two, two things, essentially. <laughs> You kind of block out this zone in the center, all right? Your opponent then has to either ante up and play somebody just as scary on the line to face him, or it just denies them the opportunity to two-stack your linemen on the edges because they are going to have to put... Or they can put a dude there, they can put a dude there, but they're not going to get any additional assists here. So if you're playing against a fundamentally strength three team, the Blood Beast in the middle there protects these guys from getting two die blocked. Because if your opponent puts a guy there and a support there, it can block out. But even if it follows up, your Blood Beast is going to get a free attack next turn. So what's likely to happen is when you're stacking three guys, including the Blood Beast on the line for defense, is your opponent is going to put a dude there put a dude there and if it wants to take profitable blocks it's actually going to have to move players in to there and there which is going to cost him activations now that's fine that's four of their players gone which means there's only seven left to activate they can do it but they won't be able to follow up and what that's going to do is that's going to give you free players and then a blood spawn that's actually quite happy to run around and blitz wherever it wants to go in the middle so that bit of denial in the beginning basically says look if you want to fight me come and get it because i'm going to fight you right back 
and there's nothing better than striking back with a blood beast claws and frenzy is going to do a lot of stuff when you kind of add it to mighty blow as well so what we've got on the edges here are strength four frenzy pieces so the only areas of vulnerability here if you've got the blood beast in the middle they're not going to go striking through there you've got a strength four piece there a strength four piece there a strength four piece there and a strength four piece there so if you look at the overlaying tackle zones of these strength four pieces there's only a couple of avenues where your opponent could get through now the reason i'm picking that out is because it's fundamentally very difficult for a strength three team to blitz through against a strength four blocker because they're going to have to drop an assist and then strike in here with an assist here to block this out to get one dice if that goes wrong it's a turnover, you know, but if it goes even slightly OK, what they end up doing is leaving somebody in base contact here. And these two squares are where they do not want to leave players. And that's the beautiful thing about this setup is because if they do not kill this Bloodseeker, the Seeker is going to be able to surf whatever's on the edge there. So they are going to have to put extra strength to clear this path in. And against a strength four piece, it's very difficult. It's a very similar defense with Orcs, with standard Chaos Chosen, with Nurgle. You've got that extra strength that makes it so difficult for strength three teams to be able to blitz through. Now, the only other thing they could do is attempt to clear a line here and clear a line here through this, this Blood Seeker. But again, strength four they can punch through here but you are going to be left with these tackle zones here so there's no easy route for them to take if this is a lineman there is a potential of them dropping through the center but dropping through the center against the corn team is going to be horrid because you've got a second layer of defense now these are all assuming you've got basically all the positionals you want what's likely to happen when you start off with the corn team is you're not going to have the blood seeker or uh, sorry the blood spawn or you're only going to have two of your seekers and that's fine too because your opponent is going to have to do a couple of things if they want to protect anybody that gets through this line here they are going to have to tag your blood seekers on the edge and that is just going to go so poorly for them because you are going to get free four die blocks right next to the edge now if they do put an assist here uh you cannot surf them using that angle unless you drop a guy there but you know what they may actually give you that opportunity so watch out for that because there is bait going here this is bait this is bait because if they drop a guy there to tag your seekers uh to try and stop you from being able to use these as you know your reserve safeties you can just drop a guy there and then surf him off very easily with plenty of dice and plenty of strength so watch out for that but realistically if they tag up your edges they keep it safe you are going to be left with two gores in the backfield who are also very capable of blitzing at strength four even amassing to one assist and then a strength four punch basically what we've got here is unless your opponent comes in takes this guy out tags them and tags both of these players you are going to be able to have a strength four piece there a strength four piece there and a blitzing strength four piece here you will have four players in the backfield with decent movement decent strength and the ability to bang down anybody that gets through so the chevron defense is excellent for mid to light teams because if they want to go for a breakthrough you are going to have plenty of plenty of backfield defense there plenty of movement from a strength four blitzer and a couple of cheeky strength four frenzies there is nowhere good for your opponent to put their players and i like that a lot now, you can change it up ever so slightly and stack the tackle zones even deeper, which is switching to the column defense. There is a soft column defense and a hard column defense. If you've got enough positionals, you can stack it like this. So if you are really trying to stop a two-turn score, a one-turn score, um, you're trying to maintain a lead going into the half, this column defense can be absolutely massive. So if you are playing against a team that maybe has a rat ogre, there is the potential for them to blitz free a sideline and then secure stack them in column and you can go strong with your strength four pieces up front or soft with your strength three pieces up front and your um strength four pieces as your safeties there do like the gores with the extra movement in the backfield here there is a huge tunnel opening here but there is no way for your opponent to get through here and even if they've got high edge uh offensive players like Hagflam or um or, or any kind of gutter runner style player you are layering these tackle zones so they can jump in here and if you've gone strong defense if you've gone strong column they're gonna have to stack stack blitz 
clear them out then you've still got these tackle zones here so they will be forced to make at least two to three dodges and that's going to be very risky okay you give them the opportunity to fail their dice moreover once that done is you are going to have a very reliable and movement six here gives you everything one two three four five six so it will give you everything here from both sides of the pitch which means they're going to have to go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven squares for them to evade um blitz without you having to use a go for it so there it and then when you've got go for it you can get everything in the backfield here so they are going to have to be able to punch through now the one vulnerability does come from the center here and if there is a way of swarming out they can potentially bust that and then tag tag but what they're doing there is they're giving you some very easy frenzy blocks and it may lure you to take those blocks and 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 skull yourself out of the contention but they're going to have to tag all these players and with movement six you do actually have a ton of reserve space a ton of reserve movement and a net of just absolute catch so if you are trying to stall out if you're trying to stop gutter runner wood elf hack phlegm from scoring column defense go strong if you're playing against strength three go soft if you're playing against strength five it will just protect you so if you're playing against uh uh yeah skaven team with the rat ogre is probably the only one i would go for you could put the lineman up front they're going to be able to take out the lineman that's absolutely fine you've still got your strength four piece there basically don't make them an easy target i guess okay so the column and the chevron give you a good mid-range defense against breakthrough teams it also gives you a nice flexible defense against a slow or medium team but if you really want to front up, if you're not worried about how long they need to score, if you're just not worried about the score at all, this is the team where you can do that with. So we're going to have a look at the strong line setup here. So the 7-4. The previous strong line, I think, was a 6-5. We've gone even harder on the corn team. Now, the cool thing here is what you're doing is you're just denying your opponent the ability to deploy heavy on the line of scrimmage and what we're doing to enable that is maximizing our strength so we've got the blood beast there and we've got two seekers on the edge pieces here now this is going to be really effective against a team who's already lost a couple of players and is primarily strength three okay one big guy not going to be a massive problem but i'm thinking if you're playing against the teams that you would be classically vulnerable with this team potentially some stunty potentially uh, elves and skaven dark elves even the strong line they are not going to want to deploy anywhere here now let's look at the way we've deployed so let's take the center to begin we've got the blood spawn in the middle and we've got alignment on each side normally that would be a bit of a vulnerability we looked at it in the last one actually they can stack reserves normally to get two die blocks on your lineman that's not going to happen here because you've got these two second contingents so if they deploy anybody here and they don't they, they're going to struggle like heck to get any kind of assists and the beautiful thing about this is they have to deploy people there there is no safe spot here so whatever happens if, even if you're playing against elves and you're like they're just going to dodge away that's fine they're going to have to dodge away with three guys and you're looking for one one okay probability wise that's a 50 percent shot there that's not exactly how it works, but you roll three dice and you've got a reasonable chance of there being a one and costing them a re-roll or just going massively wrong. Or they turn over somewhere else and leave you three very juicy targets because the massive strength of this is its strong line. The strike backs are huge. You pick a place where a strength three team can put one, two or three people on this line and have it be OK. They can deploy their entire team on this line and you are going to be OK because you've got a massive strength five block there. You've got a massive strength four block here. And by the way, these are frenzy. So wherever your opponent puts people, they are going to be in the danger zone. The best they can do is go one there, one there and then... Oh, I don't know. One there. And then in your turn, you're going to go, all right, I'll take that massive block, massive block, massive block, feed them into the middle, and you just maximize your frenzy pushes. Now, on the defense, if you are trying to stop a breakthrough, this may be risky, but you are not um, defenseless. Okay, if we look at the way the tackle zones are stacked here, that's it. Like, there's you're giving up a little bit of side. What it does do is give you a very easy blitz um, down well no it doesn't because they're strength four on the edge so you've got these seekers here ready to basically anchor the line and then they are still going to have to front up one two 
blitz through, run through, and then you're going to have a gore. You're going to have another gore. And they can go for the breakthrough, but if you use the strong line against a team that is fatigued, uh, that is depleted, or that is just a little bit slower, you have got nothing to worry about. And believe me, this is going to absolutely terrify them. And what's going to happen is they're going to deploy for offense and they are going to stay away from the line of scrimmage. And what that means is that actually puts them one square back. So the best they can do is put a guy there and a guy there. And oh, come on, let there be a blitz because that is a superb place to be when you've got strength four frenzy pieces. One, two, three squares back. You just go one, two, three block once you know block once into the ad you just got a lot of opportunity to cause just unpleasantness now the corn team is a strong team but it is not the strongest of teams it's up there but there are some other teams that, uh, renegades okay this is how you play against renegades with corn i've got my game later i've had my thinking hat on how uh, how best to deal with a team that is essentially stronger than you and more agile than you. It's going to be an interesting matchup, this one. So anchor defense will protect your key players and allow you to strike back. So you are allowing them to take the sidelines here. So this is a, a, this is a defense for teams that are stronger than you, more leveled up than you. So you're playing against a decent chaos team, a heavy Saurus team, uh, Pact is good. And actually a combo dwarf team, like a team with uh, plenty of guard and stuff like that, where they kind of become pseudo stronger than you. That's definitely one to watch as well. So the anchor defense, it gives three targets on the line. You can space them out or you can play them close. It depends on the type of opponent you're going. Spacing them out will allow them to have more profitable blocks. What it will also do, it, was, it, it, it will lure them into attaching more of their active players to the line. So the best way to play defense with corn is obviously with kick. But if you're playing against any kind of team, you do want to divide and conquer. No matter who you're playing against, it doesn't matter. So if you've got this line and you spread wide, it's going to cost them more players. You put three in the center here, and then they're going to go one, two, three, four, five along the line, and they're going to block out and take some blocks. You deploy wide like this, they're going to have to go one, two, three, four, five, and take a block there, take a block there, take a block there. That's it, okay? If they want more, they're going to have to deploy more. That's five players on the line of scrimmage. That leaves them six other players to be around. Probably one contingent, that side, and then a ball collecting crew of four. That's going to leave four of their dudes in the backfield with the ball. And then you've got all 11 here. Now, they're not going to be able to take out everybody. If they do, that's fine. But then you counter strike and you can start creating one on one matchups. If you're playing against a team that is going to be stronger than you, not every one of their players is going to be stronger. If you're playing against old corn, their linemen are vulnerable. If you're playing against renegades, their linemen are vulnerable. The big guys are terrifying. But honestly, if they use their big guys and take these guys out, then you just get to stack your big guys against their muggles. And that's going to cause a lot of fun. Now, keep the gores in reserve. You've got a blood beast here. We can go for a profitable blitz if you want to, because blitzing with a frenzied, you know, claw mighty blow piece is going to be a really good counter to a big guy offense. And you've got these strength four seekers who are able to swing around and create some matchups with um, and against the standard strength three players. That's that guy there. He's not a catcher. He's a seeker. So that's how you play anchor defense. It's not something you're going to come across very often, but when you do, you are going to lose linemen because that's what the other teams do. And then you kind of just pound the middle ground instead. Your strength four frenzy pieces are better than their strength three nothing pieces. So try and create those one-on-one -on -one matchups and create an opportunity to smash their big guys wherever you can. A seeker and a couple of assists is going to forward eye block an ogre. And that's where you want to be. So now let's look at offense with corn. Now it is a bit of a slow grindy team and you are going to get caught in some of your own traps. The problem with this team is that everybody's got frenzy. So there's not a lot of push and break away. When you commit to a brawl, you're going to get stuck in and you're going to get dragged in. So what kind of happens with this team is you end up in pockets of battle. All right. You'll end up with a pocket over here, a pocket here and a pocket here of your players just kind of ganging up on theirs. That's fine. That effect will snowball massively and you'll end up with three on two and three on one situations and that just benefits you. What you mustn't do is forget about the ball. I know that sounds really simplistic, but it is a genuine danger factor when it comes to corn. There is going to be some time where there are going to be some times where it's OK not to take a block. OK, because you need a person to be a specific place and the difficulty that you have here is your movement you are a slow team um almost half your team is going to be movement five at 
you know, you're going to have the strength element, but your seekers and your blood spawn are going to be slower than everybody else. Movement six is fine, but it's not going to get you anywhere quick. In fact, with movement six, you have to really redline it to get a two turn score. So be prepared for three to four turn scores with corn at best. You are playing a game of keep away with the ball and eventually the skulls of your enemies. So the 542 here, we've got a very strong line and we've got a collection team at the back. Now these two gores can either be stacked uh, widthwise like that or above the um, the sweet spot, one and done. If they've got kick, set wide. If you don't, then you've got this collection element. One covers, one collects when you've finished absolutely everything. It's the best way to run it. If you go this way, you can do exactly the same thing. So whether you go wide or vertical doesn't hugely matter, but if they've got kick, go wide. If they've got, if they don't have kick, go vertical. And then the fun begins so the reason we set up in a bow formation like this is because it creates these tackle zones here and what that does is that protects you from the blitz if they roll a 10 they're not getting through they may be able to blitz alignment on the edge but that's going to kind of protect most of the field which is kind of where the ball is going to end up so that you you're protected from that now you don't want your seekers to be deployed too deep because they are slow and you want them to be ready for a brawl so we are setting up five wide with the blood spawn in the middle and two seekers here now the reason we want to do that is because we want to combo our opening blocks so the ball lands here you move one gore up to protect the ball and this one can come up at the end and pick it up no problem at all but this is the last thing you do once you've protected the ball that's supposed to say last then you can start deleting opponents Pay very close attention to the way you block on the line. You've got frenzy, so you've got a great opportunity to maximize your blocks. So in this situation here, don't just block up, block up, block up. You are missing opportunities. Block across. So block across here. If it's a push push, your blood spawn ends up there and then this lineman can then take four dice and then you can do the same on the other side. You can go seeker there. You are better strength seeker there and then you've got more blocks and more blocks you want to try and find a way to get all five of your players on the front line to get four dice if you can do that i guarantee that you are going to start the next turn playing 11 players against their eight activations and that's when it starts to snowball then you can start fronting up always protect the ball and use the seekers as excellent sides of the cage but remember they are going to be very easy to bait away you're going to be left with some great two die blocks, but that's going to leave you out of position. And that's the danger here with corn. So use the gauze to protect the ball, but you are playing keep away from the action. You want to try and then take your nine remaining players and delete as many of theirs as possible. This team can throw an unnecessary amount of blocks. And when you're throwing that many dice, you will be removing players. And it's a cascade. The longer you can keep the ball away, the better you can keep that strength in. So collect, bring it up, do not worry about driving forward. Do everything you can to, to consolidate wherever you can. Take blocks from gap places. OK, so this guy not being here, no problem at all. This guy not being here, no problem at all, because you've got these interlocking tackle zones there. So block with the ones you don't need them to be there and then only block with the rest when you really, really have to. And every now and again, your opponent is just going to front up and chuck a bunch of dudes on the line. Seven, four, block them down. Just maximize the blocks wherever you can. You've got a good collection team here, but you are allocating more resource to being in your backfield. What we want to do is keep that ball safe. These guys are there to just run interference. So ball ends up here, cover, bring up. Then you start getting stuck in to that combat because that is what corn is all about. Protect the ball, allow them to take the risk in doing the dodgy stuff. It will work sometimes and it will fail others. I'm a Skaven coach at heart, so I know that anybody who leaves the ball unprotected is just a couple of three plus rolls away from having them turned over and scored against. But it also means that I'm two three plus rolls away from losing it and dying everywhere. And if you shoot for the ball and the corn team is ready for you, it is going to hurt and you're going to lose player after player after player. And you cannot score with no players. You can score with a couple, but if you're playing against Corn, you're going to be out several players. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video now because I have to go and play Chaos Renegades. I'll let you know how I got on. Should be an interesting one. I believe he's running all three big guys. I'm running four Seekers and no Bloodspawn. So this guy is going to be a lineman. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. What I'm going to do is just allow them a couple of blocks on my lineman and then counter punch with the seekers and just try and pack
pound the pressure against their strength three pieces. If they're going to give me opportunity blocks on strength fives, I should have enough numbers there to be able to absolutely pound them. That is my goal. Let's see how it goes. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy Frenzy Blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can. Or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.